Okay. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the incredible shrimp in food and its consequences in the ocean. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping all of you here are familiar with the old children's song, The Husband Lady Who Swallowed the Fly. Uh, I really want to swallow the fly. Uh, well, she swallowed a, a spider to catch the fly, and uh, we know how that turned out. So she swallowed a, a herd to catch the spider. And what this really illustrates is uh, predators can control their prey. It's a really important concept. And you can take this and extend it out into nature and think about uh, predator prey interactions in the sense of, of a whole chain of interactions. So here are uh, <coughs> elk, and aspen trees in Yellowstone. And here we find this food chain acting such that where wolves are present, they suppress elk. Um, and so elk don't overgraze juvenile aspen trees, so you get the larger stands of aspen. So this is a food chain. Uh, again, obviously this is a, an oversimplification, and really uh, Yellowstone, this is even a, still a simplification, this is more of a sort of diverse food web. You can see uh, our wolf, elk, aspen, and all of this. But it's a big, complex web. I study this web uh, in the ocean. And in oceans, uh, you see a lot of changes to food webs. So let's say you have a, a sample food web at the top with uh, predators, prey, and, and plants or algae. In this case, uh, predators control the prey, prey control their algae. Man has wrought a lot of changes on this web, uh, primarily through fishing. And a part of my dissertation really looked at the fact that 70% uh, of extinctions in the ocean, local or global, have been top rows, have been predators. Um, so you're getting webs that look more and more like this. And this has tremendous implications for uh, the adaptive potential of marine ecosystems to various impacts of climate change, storms, uh, heat, acidification, and more. So really we're looking at what's the adaptive potential of these food webs going to be after the loss of predators. I first looked at this question in kelp forest. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the scale of this picture, this is about uh, 30 feet. So kelp are these huge algae uh, that formed forests along the Pacific coast, and actually in a variety of other places around the world. Uh, and I asked, what are the quest, what are the possible, or what are the consequences, sorry, of the loss of predator diversity for kelp? As, as kelp can uh, buffer shorelines for wave action, it, it, uh, the, the sort of uh, habitat provides some probably important for all of the other species that may be affected by climate change. So I started by looking at some surveys over several hundred square kilometers that have been conducted over the past 20 years. And here's sort of one of my two data slides. And you can see that predator diversity in these kelp forests out uh, over huge spatial scales and temporal scales from this park service monitoring data, uh, it's positively correlated with the abundance of kelp. So more species of predators, more kelp. This is just a correlation though, so I, I took this into the lab and created some uh, little kelp forest, uh, mini kelp forest, if you will, in uh, and, and manipulated the actual diversity of predators, so big sea stars or crabs, and looked at how does that affect the amount of kelp if you have a, a bunch of grazers in there, a bunch of herbivores, a, a bunch of predators, what happens when you change their diversity? And sure enough, more species of predators, uh, more kelp left over by the experiment. So again, predator diversity is important. Uh, intriguingly, this was uh, actually largely due to behavior. So here's sort of a set of follow-up experiment where we stop predators from being able to control their prey. Uh, <laughs> this little guy ran over and, and hid behind a box for the rest of the experiment. We find that there are actually a lot of uh, non-consumptive effects or predator impacts through things other than just eating the prey. Uh, so obviously, I couldn't go out and then uh, rip all the predators out of the whole kelp forest. So I went to uh, a second system, um, also to test the generality of these ideas. If you go out to a dock anywhere along the coast of the ocean, lean over the edge and you see the most beautiful community. Uh, these are all different types of sessile filter feeders, um, sea squirts, diazoans, hydroids, just this incredible diversity. But in the ocean, most of these are invasive. Um, and invasive filter feeders, as we know from examples like the zebra mussel, can have a huge impact on collapse of the ecosystems. Uh, so I was really interested in how do predators in these dock ecosystems control species invasion or the cover of these invasive filter feeders that can have such a tremendous impact? And this is really important because a, a lot of research has shown that climate change has actually sped up the rate of species invasion on these docks. Um, it sped up both delivery rates as well as the growth rates of a lot of invasive species. So what role does predator diversity have to play? Well, first I went out, I did a survey, um, and now I just the last one and found that sure enough, when you have more predators, uh, more species of predators, you have a lower cover of these invasive filter feeders. 
Again, correlational, so let's go and do an experiment. Um, I put out panels for about a year, uh, or sample some at a month, and sample some after a year, and seeded these panels with different diversities of predators. So in this case, our predators are here. Uh, this is a single species tree. You can see these little limpets, which are basically like the snails on back of the sledgehammer's <laughs> um, And as you can see, these guys weren't terribly effective. This, this one species, so there's a, a lot of um, colonial sea squirts all over this plate. And different single species treatments had uh, different <coughs> types of things that covered a lot of the panels. Uh, it was really only in these high diversity panels where we saw, you know, here you've got three different species of predator and they're all controlling uh, their prey. And this indeed did translate to changes in filtration. So higher predator diversity and lower impact from these invasive sea squirts uh, and, and other species. So the take home messages from this really are that in the sea, most human-caused extinctions thus far have been to predators. Um, and if you want to look a little bit more about how climate change can change these food webs, uh, come see my poster later on. Um, second, the decline in predator diversity will have cascading consequences uh, for a variety of different systems. And lastly, the ecosystems with lower predator diversity uh, may indeed have less resilience in the future to uh, future changes from uh, climate change. And I will end uh, with a, a haiku that sums up my dissertation. Uh, and I urge all of you who have found the dissertation haiku and submit your own. Uh, <laughs> check it out. It's a wonderful Zen exercise. And I'd like to, to thank my advisor and 